Hello again. This is lesson 3.6 and we're still talking about clustering. In the last lesson we looked at some different clustering algorithms and uh, each of them had a different kind of metric. I think the simple k-means talked about the uh, total squared distance of uh, each uh, instance from its cluster center. Now, that's not necessarily a good way of evaluating clustering and it certainly makes it difficult to compare the results of different clustering algorithms. Uh, so one thing we can do uh, in Weka is to visualize the clusters. So over here in Weka, I've got the iris data open, and uh, I've got here the uh, simple k-means method uh, with uh, three clusters selected, and I'm going to run that. And I'm going to, on the right-click menu, I'm going to visualize the cluster assignments. And here they are. This would make most sense if we plot the, the cluster against the instance number. So remember the iris data, the first 50 instances are one kind of iris, and the next 50 are another, and the third 50 are another. Well, this looks good, too good to be true. Here the first 50 are in one cluster, the second 50 are in another cluster, and the third 50 are in another cluster. And in data mining, if things look too good to be true, they probably are. Uh, so the problem here, when you think about it, is that one of the attributes is the class. And it's not really fair to include the class when we're doing the clustering. So on the clustering panel, we can ignore an attributes. I'm going to ignore the class attribute and uh, try again. And now I've got 61 instances in one cluster and 50 in another and uh, 39 in another. And if I visualize the cluster assignments and choose the cluster here, I get a different kind of picture. You can see that the uh, first uh, cluster here looks pretty good, but there are some errors here. There's some green things have crept into this uh, second thing. For the third, uh, the last 50 items in the data set, which all belong to one class of kind of iris, and then we get a whole bunch of, uh, of stuff coming in here from uh, another cluster. So that's not looking so good. How do you tell which instances are in which cluster. Well, to do that, there's a filter called add cluster. It's an unsupervised attribute filter called add cluster. And in this filter, we can specify a clusterer. Here we specify the simple k-means, and I'll choose uh, three clusters again. And I'm going to run this filter. I'm going to apply the filter and that's going to add a new attribute. Uh, so let's do this. And you can see we've got a new attribute. It's called cluster attribute 6. And if we edit this data set, we can have a look at the values for the last attribute and compare them with the class. This is an unsupervised filter, so the class was not used when running the filter. The clustering is done just on the basis of the first four attributes. And you can see that the aristotosis are all in cluster 2. And the next lot of irises, the verticolors, are mostly in cluster 1. But there's a couple of cluster 3s here. And the third lot, the iris virginicas, are mostly in cluster 3, but there's quite a lot of cluster 1s. That's just exactly what we saw when we visualized the cluster assignments before. So coming back to the slide, we've looked at the visualized cluster assignments on the cluster panel. And uh, we've learned how to ignore attributes. Typically, the class attribute is a good one to ignore if you've got a data set with a class. And then we've looked at the filter, the add cluster, unsupervised attribute filter, and looked at the result of that and shown how you can add a new attribute, which gives a cluster number, and then look at that uh, assigned to which instances have got which cluster by clicking the Edit button. A way of evaluation in Weka is called the classes to clusters evaluation. And I'm going to go back to the iris data and do a classes to clusters evaluation. Let me get rid of this. And I'm going to undo the filter that we just did to get the original iris data back. I'm going to go to my cluster panel and click classes to clusters evaluation and run that. And now I see I've got my three classes, 
and uh, there are three clusters and you can see which how many of each class are assigned to which cluster and you can see there's 17 incorrectly clustered instances we'll have a look at that in a minute but first let me go and use the EM algorithm and see how that does again I'm going to specify three uh, clusters and I'm going to run that and I get the similar kind of thing here so back on the slide this is the result I saw for simple k-means with three clusters and you can see that uh, the majority in cluster 0 is this 47 here that's the versicolor so we're going to assign versicolor to cluster 0 the majority in cluster 1 that's the uh, second column uh, the cytosis that 50 there in the second column the column labeled 1 and uh, the final column uh, there's a 36 there, so the majority class is Virginica. And that's where we get the 17 incorrectly clustered instances from. And then EM does quite a lot better here. We uh, only get 14 incorrectly clustered instances, or 9% of the data set. So that's a classes to clusters evaluation. Now there's a classifier, a meta classifier called classification via clustering. And uh, it works by ignoring the classes, clustering the data, assigning to each cluster its most frequent class, and that's a classifier. That's very similar to what we just did, but we can evaluate it like we evaluate classifiers. So let's go back to Weka. I'm going to go to classify, and in my meta uh, list, I'm going to choose classification via clustering. Specify, I'm going to stick to. Uh, simple k-means with three clusters. Now if I evaluate that on the training set, that's roughly, that is exactly what we just did with the uh, on the clustering panel. Let me start that and here I get exactly the same matri matrix as I just looked at and as you can see there are 17 errors here. That's evaluating on the training set, of course there's the 17 errors up there. We know we shouldn't be evaluating the training set. We're going to use cross-validation, which is going to do the usual thing, take 90%, form a clustering, form a classification based on that clustering, and then see how well, how well that does on the held out 10% of the data set. And uh, in this case, I get uh, slightly worse results. I've got 19, as I would expect, slightly worse results, 19 errors. Uh, or uh, an 84% success rate. So that's classification via clustering, and of course I can choose different clusterers and build classifiers based on them, and it's a very good way of comparing clusterers. Okay, it's hard to evaluate clustering. Simple k-means uses prints this figure within the win within cluster sum of squared errors, but really clustering should be evaluated with respect to a particular application. Visualization helps. It helps you to see what's happening to your data. The add cluster filter allows you to see which instances are in which cluster, which is often useful to see. The classes to clusters evaluation gives you a, a way of looking at the clusters, um, uh, but in effect, uh, it, it uses the entire data set. And so to look at the incorrectly assigned um, instances uh, based on a classification made from the entire data set risks overfitting. You should never evaluate uh, on the training set. So the classification via clustering uses the same kind of technique to produce a classifier that can then be evaluated in different ways. For example, tenfold cross-validation, which is what we just did. There's some more stuff on evaluating clustering in the course text. And uh, you should go and do the activity associated with this uh, lesson. Uh, this is uh, the last lesson in class three. So we'll see you soon in class four. Bye for now.